to Business Studies at MVA. Today we're going to look at the different types of organizations. One of the first choices to make when starting your own business is what type of business you will be. Before we look at the actual types, I think it's important to highlight a key piece of business terminology that is extremely important when looking at the different options. That term is limited or unlimited liability. So what does it mean? Basically, if a business has limited liability, it means that any owner or shareholder would only risk whatever money they have invested, not a penny more and not a penny less. However, if a business goes the unlimited liability route, then any owner or shareholder risks any initial investment, but could actually risk losing any assets or money that they have outside their business. You could lose your house, car, savings, as the saying goes, you could lose the shirt off your back. Remember, using specialist terminology with accurate definitions is an important examination tool in business studies, so add this one to your glossary bank. So back to business. Many small businesses start up as a sole trader. This is literally where one individual person owns, controls, and manages the business. They make all the decisions, get all the profit, if there is any, and often do all or most of the work, to begin with anyway. But this does mean they take all the risk. Quite stressful. Many new businesses take more than a couple of years before they make a profit, so imagine the stress that you might feel. But if it works, then the rewards are endless. The second option is to become a partnership. You might think that a partnership is two people, but in business studies, there is actually no specific number. In fact, it is generally seen as being anywhere between two and 20 people. The major benefits with choosing partnership is that all the workload, stress, and spending can be shared with someone else. But in most cases, each of the partners will still face unlimited liability, while also now having to share any profits that the business now makes. If a business needed to raise a much larger amount of finance, then there are two main options, public limited company or PLC, or private limited company, LTD. The good thing is that businesses with these titles make it easy for us, and you will often see the letters written after their name. Both these companies are incorporated, meaning that they are now a separate legal entity. In basic terms, if someone sues, then they sue the company, not the individual owners. The biggest difference with these are that they are now shareholders, someone who owns a small part of a business. The main difference with these shareholders is that with an LTD, the shareholders are family or friends, whereas with a PLC, shares are sold publicly on the stock market, and therefore they can change hands many times, giving you less control. This can be dangerous. Look at Manchester United. The Glazers kept buying shares until they had a controlling interest in the club. As you can see, there are two sides again. It is easier to raise larger amounts of finance and less risk. However, profits are shared through dividends to all the shareholders. So how to decide? Each business will have to look at its own situation. How much finance does it need to raise? How much work will be involved? How quickly will profits be made and how much risk are the owners willing to take? What we have considered so far are private businesses owned by individuals or groups of individuals, but some businesses are not owned privately, but publicly. Now, a public corporation is one that is owned and controlled by the government. The number of public corporations does change over time, depending on what political changes occur, but generally areas of public ownership have traditionally been in the transport and utilities. This helps the government to provide a service that they feel everyone should have access to and means it can be financed with taxes, even if it's not profitable. Sadly, this also provides a lack of incentive to try to be efficient as there are no angry shareholders waiting on a dividend. Warning, do be careful. A public corporation, a government owned one, is not the same as a public limited company or PLC owned privately by shareholders. There is one other major option. Does anyone fancy owning a McDonald's? <laughs> well, not exactly owned, but you could become a franchise owner. You might not have a great business idea of your own, but see a gap in the market for an already established business. And with lots of help and support along with training, etc., it can help reduce the risk. Does this sound too good to be true? Well, it does come at a price. 
the more successful the brand, the more expensive the initial franchise cost will be. And it doesn't end there. You will have to pay a yearly percentage from your profits too. There are franchises available all over the UK and worldwide. Some for as low as £5,000, though I must warn you, you might not have heard of them before. <laughs> if you did want a McDonald's franchise, you are likely to have to pay much more than £100,000. If you've been lucky enough to travel around the world and seen McDonald's there, you should not be able to tell which are centrally owned and which are franchise owned, as individual franchisees cannot make changes. The only changes you will see are in some menu items, which are to reflect the different tastes in different countries. For example, melted cheddar cheese as a side order in Brazil, mixed spaghetti in the Philippines, taro pie in China, and poutine in Canada. Yeah. It is important that you can describe each organization type as well as explain reasons for and against each one. This will help you develop your analysis and lead you to your evaluation marks in any longer mark questions. So that's it. I'm Swarna with MBA, and I hope this has been useful.